Hey guys, <clears throat> Jason here, 1952 Jeep. Uh, I wasn't even going to do a video on this, but this is turning out so nice that uh, I, I'm I'm I, I, I'm just beside myself. Uh, this right here is a uh, old lodge, uh, and I'm not the biggest fan of lodge cast iron, but uh, but it is made in America and it is cast iron, and. Uh, my only problem with it really is that it's really textured, really pitted really bad, and um, I feel like it needs slicking it up. Uh, and I've done this with a wire brush to uh, to several uh, large skillets and, uh, and, and a you know, wire brush on my uh, angle grinder, and, and it helps them a bunch, uh, and then re-cure them of course, or uh, season them, whatever you want to call it. but. Uh, I picked this one up at a yard sale uh, last weekend uh, on the way to the farm. This lady had uh, had this and two or three other small items, uh, some some uh, stoneware uh, dishes that I liked, and uh, I picked them all up for about six bucks. Uh, so I figure I got a dollar in this thing, uh, and it was rusted. It didn't look really good, as you can tell from the back. And the inside actually looked worse, but the uh, the back's pretty not real great. Anyway. But, what I decided to do to this thing is I took some 80 grit sandpaper and I put on my little uh, Dewalt jitterbug little grinder or uh, sander. that thing for probably about the past half hour to an hour and I've got it uh, to a nice finish as you can tell but what I'm amazed with really is uh, gosh I hope my camera's picking this up well uh, you see the sides that's a side that I haven't done very much to But this little one-fourth of it right here, what I've done with this is I've taken a uh, flap disc. And this, this flap disc is wore out. It goes on an angle grinder. Uh, and it's, basically, it's, it's a bunch of sheets of uh, sandpaper. You can get them in different grits. I'm not even sure what grit this one is. It's, it's wore out, though. It's, so it's a very fine, fine grit because all the... Uh, all the sandpapers wore off but it's a bunch of see these little half moons here all these are just little pieces of sandpaper sandwiched together and glued and crimped together into a little disc and it's uh it's really good at cleaning up welds when they're new uh, especially if you're a poor um, novice uh, <coughs> uh, uh, shade tree mechanic welder like me uh, a flap disc will really make uh, make a, a crummy weld look good but uh, a wore out flap disc really makes the inside of a lodge skillet shiny and slick I mean you can see right here where the texture takes over and how grainy this is all the way around but right here I mean you can see where I picked up and done over to the handle this one fourth of this thing so I'm going to finish this up tonight and uh, I may uh, pop in a quick finished video and then I'm going to take it in the house and I'm going to put this thing in the oven with a little Crisco on it at about 450, uh, between 400, 450 degrees, somewhere in there just depending on what my mood is, how hard I want to bake it. But uh, I'm kind of excited about this. This may be a way to make a large skillet, something that you can actually do a flapjack on or fried egg on and uh, you know do an over easy egg and it actually not stick at all this may be a procedure that can be used to fix to uh, I take that back not really fix lodge cookware just make lodge cookware better that's what we'll call this making lodge cookware better that's gonna be the name of this video so anyway uh, it'll take me a little time but uh, and uh, keep playing with this. See y'all in a bit. All 
Alright guys, uh, I re-greased this thing before I thought about it. Uh, that's sort of the color you wind up with, kind of a gold color, after your first run through the oven. I put this thing in for about five hours last night at uh, 450 degrees uh, with a very thin, thin, thin coat of uh, Crisco on it. And I was just fixing to put it back. I pulled it out, let it cool, um, let everything settle and get uh, get chilled uh, down to uh, room temperature. And I was just fixing to put it back in. Uh, Rewiped it down. Uh, this time I actually used a little bacon grease on it. A uh, very thin, thin coat of bacon grease once again. I'll uh, put it in the oven, 450 degrees. I'm going to repeat that process probably four or five times until this thing is just as black as soot so I'll bring you back here in, uh, next time or two so maybe next time we'll be cooking on it well the chickens have given me a sign it says We want cornbread. Okay, the first step in making cornbread is salmon patties. That's uh, the first step. Uh, seriously. Uh, <clears throat> making salmon patties for dinner, but we're going to make some cornbread for the chickens. Look how nice this turned out. I mean, you can see yourself in that. Uh, if any of y'all have got lodges, lodge cast iron, you know that it more than likely looks looks like that. After we finished with this one, oh man, I think that's going to be a fine cornbread skillet, but we're going to give it a try here in a minute. Check out the, ooh, the peppers my wife pickled up last night. Don't they look lovely? So, anyway, first step, put some grease in this thing and put it in the oven. At what temperature? Uh, and uh, you get the uh, cornbread skillet and the grease all uh, same temperature before you pour the uh, corn batter, cornbread batter in. So that's what we're going to start with. Let me get this thing warm and we'll be back in a second. Okay guys, uh, uh, I don't know what to tell you here. I'm going to show you how we make the, uh, how my lovely wife makes the uh, cornbread, but she doesn't measure anything, so, you know, this is a, uh, here, just to give you a reference about how big the, the bowl is. Uh, uh, oh, and there's, uh, there's my youngest daughter back here snickering. Uh, anyway, so, there's the cornbread bowl. There is the, uh, cornmeal. The precise measurement. The precise. In, in a precise, shake, in the shaky, baggy measurement. It's almost halfway up the bowl. <laughs> almost halfway up the bowl. But what does your bowl look like? We don't know. <laughs> it's about the size of my hand. So. It's good to use a warm room temperature egg. Room temperature egg. Awesome. That's fresh today. Uh, and, and it's good to have puppy dogs walking in circles mm -hmm. in between and everybody. Roughly, I'm going to say a fourth of a cup of oil. Okay, well, we're going to put okay, we're going to put a measurement on the oil. Roughly. Roughly. I need the buttermilk. <laughs> yeah, fresh egg squirt down on the bottom door. Yep, the buttermilk's in the door of the refrigerator down at the bottom. Got it. All right. Mm -hmm. It just has it. All right. Buttermilk. Clean spoon. Clean spoon. Shake, Shake the said buttermilk. Yes. Break the yolk up just a little bit before you start with the uh, buttermilk. How much 
no precise measurement on the buttermilk. I just put it in there until it gets the consistency that I prefer. I'm it's kind of, alright guys, it's kind of like making uh, mortar mix. You want it to pour, but you don't want it to be very, very thin. It's kind of like making mortar mix. As it dries, you add a little more water. Well, same with this, you know. Depending on the humidity in the air, you're going to have different amounts of buttermilk. So, let's just pretend we're making See mortar mix and laying bricks. See how chalky looking down in there? It's not enough buttermilk for me. I'll add a little more. The dog burps. <laughs> I need just a little bit more. I don't like it that. That's my homestead hollow stone ground cornmeal. And this will be just about right. sort of pourable, but it's not real thin. Let's skillet out. I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh yeah. Hot, hot skillet coming through. Fine. Hot skillet coming through. See it on the eye, so we can I have to burn. show them. Well, was I in the shot? No, step out. Oh, okay. Alright, watch this guys. Ow. This goes in. Hear that? Yeah. That is exactly what you want to hear. Alright, we may not need that other skillet that I put in there, huh? Well, I think this is going to do it. Cool. Alright. Now I want to take it and oh. take it back to just a little bit to get the oil circulating and air bubbles loose. And we'll put it in there. And it goes in the oven. All right then. In the oven. And for how long? Roughly 30 minutes, but until what the top is golden brown. Still at 350. <clears throat> and the top is and golden brown. At 350, roughly 30 minutes, until the top is golden brown. All right. That's that. We got 30 minutes to Bye. wait. Bye. <laughs> We got 30 minutes to wait, and uh, we will uh, come back for the uh, and see how well the non-stick surface that I put on that uh, lodge works. So back in a few. Okay, after you uh, after you uh, 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 get it out, you want to let it sit and cool for a little while. What, at least five minutes, you said. Yes, and it could right at 30 minutes and you can see the tops of golden brown it's a little darker over here than it is over here but there's some golden all the way over the top right, so let's see see how we did with the non-stick Not too shabby, huh? It did take some pieces off right here and right there, but uh, so I, but that'll uh, <clears throat> that'll go away. The more we cook with it, the yes. bad the better it'll get. So there you go. I'll take care. 1952G out.